A Utah police officer killed a handcuffed drunk man inside of the police precinct. Let me first go to the video. Is it gonna my shit? Okay, sit down. They're gonna my shit. Okay, sit down. All right. I'll get the gun out. You sit down. No, I'm gonna sit down. Okay, stay seated. It's gonna race. Okay, good job. Thanks for sitting. Stay down in my seat. Stay down. Okay. Stay seated. All right. You don't want to fight with me. You definitely don't want to fight with this guy. Just sit your ass and stay. Okay. You're not letting me go. No, we're not letting you go. We told you it'll still be a few minutes before you can go anywhere. For what? Before we go to jail. Tell you what, give me your shoe. No. Yeah. No. I'm giving you my shoe. A scuffle ensues. Longman watches. They killed him handcuffed inside of the police precinct. Now there was a cop yelling, he's grabbing the gun. There's no indication that this handcuffed individual um, grabbed a gun at all. But let me give you some more background to this horrific story. Um, Michael Chad Breinholt, the last words he heard before he was killed was you're about to die my friend. That was the quote from the police officer, you're about to die, my friend. Then a West Valley City Police Sergeant pulled the trigger. There's more, with his hands cuffed behind his back, he briefly wrestled with two officers, you saw that. One screamed that Brian Holt was grabbing his holstered gun. Once again, we have no indication he was successful in doing any of that. Sergeant Tyler Longman rushed into the room. This person was not even involved in the altercation. Sergeant Tyler Longman rushed into the room and made his declaration and fired. Let's put a picture of Sergeant Longman on the screen. That's him, that's him. Look at him, take a good look at this guy. This individual has already killed three people in the line of duty, not shot at three people. He has killed three people while being a police officer. He has been cleared of all of his killings. Now I wanna remind you that well over 90% of police officers will go throughout their entire career and never even have to use their gun. 99% never have to use their gun fatally. This man literally has killed three people while serving as a police officer in that division. West Valley City's Incident Review Committee determined Tyler Longman did not violate policy. And he's back on duty after being on administrative leave, which is standard protocol after a police shooting. His actions are also defended by Utah's Fraternal Order of Police. Uh, There is currently an investigation by the district attorney's office, but I'm not holding my breath. But once again, you see a police officer not involved in in the scuffle. This man is drunk by admission. And the officer out of all of those cops in that room, the one officer who decided to kill somebody at the damn precinct is the one officer that has already killed two people. Ladies and gentlemen, you may have a serial killer in your ranks. What are you going to do? Benjamin Dixon, host of the Benjamin Dixon Show, um, progressive activist and a dear friend. Benjamin, what are your thoughts here? (coughs) Shad, we give tax dollars to um, barbarians who get joy 
out of killing us. I did not know that that officer had already had two previous kills. Yeah. And I use it that kind of callously, that language kind of callously because you know somewhere he's counting his kills. You know somewhere you said we got a serial killer in our midst. I it, somewhere this guy really believes that he can get away with murder. And he's not the only one. And these are the people who occupy our communities with the expectation that they're gonna deliver us justice and protect and serve when they're out here executing us. I wonder when other police officers, when they look at something like this, do they not look at it like we look at it? And here's how I see it. Now, I'm a layman, I'm not a cop, don't wanna be the popo. But when I look at something like this, I said, wait a minute, I counted at least four police officers, probably more inside of that precinct. You mean to tell me that none of these other police officers thought the incident mm. needed a gunshot. Nobody else believed that this person should have been killed except for the one man who has already killed two people in the line of duty. Do you not find that quite ironic, Benjamin? I find that ironic, disturbing and disgusting. And I also find the behavior of the officers leading up antagonizing the situation. The man is drunk, he's handcuffed. How difficult is it to apprehend someone who's drunk and handcuffed? Most of us dream of the opportunity of showing off and being able to beat someone up who's drunk because it's just that easy. And these officers can't handle a drunk man in handcuffs. And so they antagonize the situation to the extent where they're now creating the chaos that the serial killer could come in, ease right in there and execute his next victim. This entire thing was fabricated from the beginning because of how they're just used to getting away with murder. Yeah, and the thing is, man, there's a reason why professionalism is required. Professionalism is required because other people around you may not be professional. And that's why you have to take it upon yourself as an individual, especially an individual in high authority, significant public trust has been given to you to act in a professional manner, even when the person around you is intoxicated. Even if the individual next to you is having a bad day, it mm. is still your responsibility to act and maintain professionalism mm. in light of all of that. Easily, if the life of this individual would have been top priority, there are a thousand ways to handle this better. And I know people will come at me and say, well, Rashad, this was justified because there was a scuffle. This is the police. The man was in handcuffs. Just think about this. Even if you accept the narrative of the other cop, and please understand that he knew what to say before he killed him, okay? Mm -hmm. Understand that, first of all. But even if you believe his narrative that somehow the person was reaching for a gun, he's in damn handcuffs. He's in handcuffs. What is he going to do? And the holstered gun is holstered. You have to take the lock off if you know anything about a police holster. You know you have to unlock the button in order to grab the weapon and then aim and fire. This was avoidable. It is no coincidence in my humble opinion that this was one cop out of a sea of cops. And the one cop who did it happens to be the only cop that got three killings on his record now. Mm. Amazing, amazing. Um, what do you think is gonna happen beyond this? The DA says they're looking into it, investigation is pending. What are your thoughts about what may happen? Yeah, no, I, I think that yet again, we may find that it is it is very easy for cops to get away with murder because the system is structured to keep them from being ever held accountable for what they do. Dr. Ritchie, that's the thing. They can brag about this because they get away with it. So my fear is that that will repeat itself. My hope is that we could do better. Yeah, very well said.